How's it going, everyone? Welcome in to the off-season podcast, where we keep you entertained all off-season long. We've got some great stories today. We're going to go over the finale of Imposter. Just went down yesterday, so we're going to recap that some. I'll let you know well in advance of any spoilers. Um, we obviously have the guess the rating game. We're cutting out mm. the division guessing. Just guessing the rating today. Uh, and then we got a few good topics and then another good story to end out. So it should be a good show today. Um, let's kick it off with a story from Tim from Milwaukee. This one felt timely. He said, can, we, can we talk about the biggest story, though, of the week? Let's hear it. Ken Climo got exposed on Twitter. Yeah. Also. Yeah. That, that, Hilarious. That, that, I, I just got to say real quick, you had something that could have been great. Yeah. Your tweets were actually funny. You actually had a lot of really good tweets. Where you messed up is when you actually try to convince people that you're actually Ken Climo. Even after the fact Ken Climo came out on social media, which he doesn't have. I think he posted on his wife's Facebook page saying, guys, please do not think this is me. This is not me. And you doubled down and you tripled down and you still try to deceive people. If you would have just been Ken Climo parody account, it would have been gold. It would have been great. Well, I think as of today, he's still tweeting. I went to like, yeah. I went and looked to see because he obviously deleted he can the tweet. He can still tweet still, but just put parody account. Let people know <laughs> that you're not impersonating someone and trying to convince people. Because that's the thing that that's that's where it crossed the line for me. Yeah, is when people were messaging me, being like, "I can't have you, Brody. You need to talk about this on tour life. I can't believe this King Climo saying all this." stuff and it's like bro come on so <laughs> turns out uh turns out disreflect images yeah. About, yeah. um we're well, in the 20, I, 2024 I, I love that it like you could tell whenever it was first posted on facebook and somebody was like oh my gosh he just like face revealed i was like looking at the center of the disc and was like where and i did then i just caught it at the end on the edge <laughs> of the rim and i was like oh that must have been what happened to him like he just didn't notice it it was so so subtle but yet so clear it. once you saw it did yeah. not notice it yeah it's just tough well i mean also like just why why even post a picture that you actually took yeah like it wasn't even that or, funny of a of well because like, he's yeah. he's constantly trying to convince people that it's him yeah that's true but anyways, so, got, too, got too close to the well, well, that, it, sorry, yeah. King Climber, not him. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this story comes from Tim from Milwaukee. He said, I started playing in June of 2022 with one of my best friends. By August, I was going out almost every day after work and playing on the weekends as long as it wasn't raining. By the time November rolled around, I was deep in disc golf fever. This was either the week before or two weeks before Thanksgiving, a Saturday afternoon. Most of the leaves had already fallen off the trees, but it was still fairly warm, and most of the gre- most of the geese hadn't yet made their trip down south. Mm. Dylan and I were playing Root River, which is set on a 30-plus-mile parkway that works its way through most of the city. And the, the course kind of straddles these two sections of roadway where you play up and then back down and finish 18 right beside one's tee. We were on the farthest part out, hole 12, walking to 13's tee, and after 13, you cross the street and work your way back, starting on 14. As we were walking up, there's a gaggle of geese. First off, I don't know if that's what a group of that geese is. That's correct. Called. That yeah, is correct. Yeah, that's it awesome. is a gaggle. Uh, there's yeah. a gaggle of geese behind the hill that 14's basket was placed on that month. Dylan and I are chatting as I see a beige Toyota Camry or Corolla pull up and stop on the road beside the geese. I turn to look at Dylan as I'm commenting on whether whatever we were talking about, and I look back towards 13's T. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a guy walking back towards the car, towards the rear passenger door, and it's open, and the movement draws my attention towards him. I see him kind of hunch his way into the back seat, and I kid you not, I see a wing flap out of the door and into the air. The door quickly slams shut, and the car what? speeds off, doing a rolling stop at the so- at the stop sign. I turn to Dylan in disbelief, playing on my face, and he must have saw the same thing I did as he was staring back at me with shock on his face as well. We knew <laughs> someone someone wasn't eating turkey for Thanksgiving that year. Dang. Is that like a real up, problem? Hold up and grab a goose and... Got on people, out of there. Well, you the cook those? Can you, can you oh, cook yeah. goose like that? Oh, yeah. It's not like a special <laughs> goose? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the specifics, but like goose is pretty, it's pretty legit, I guess. Do you but eat swan? 
I don't know. I have no I idea. Know. But is that like ever... a real problem? Are there people out here snatching geese? I feel like there's such a, there's such an abundance of them if you go to the right place. Like oh, they're kind of annoying. Go to uh, go to freaking OTB. They've got a Everywhere. real big goose problem out there. Pooping all over the place. I, um, I, maybe they're just helping with an invasive problem. Have you guys seen that video of this drive by? It's crazy. like a couple. It's like a couple. The per, uh, the ladies in the front and the guys in the back. He's got like a one man band type of thing, and they're walking through the streets. And there's like eight geese in between them in a line marching. And they're just marching yes, through the street. I have seen that. And these Crazy. they're massive geese. And they're just following, they're just following the leader. Them. What yeah. is that? Geese are Wild. scary. I, I wish I had sent Salas the video, but I uh, have a video. One time I got back from a disc golf tournament and we were in the parking lot and there was a goose and I was just in college. So I decided, Hey, film this. I'm going to run at this goose and just oh. see what happens. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I get about five steps away and hit the brakes because it lifts up its wings and then charges at me flies. It flew like a foot off the ground at me for a solid, like 50 feet. I thought it was going to kill me. And luckily it, it held back, but I got chased by a goose and so that's you have, scary. You have that story. And then you got this guy who just put it into his coat and jumped. Yeah. Back he took camera. matters into his own. Hands. Which that's what, what happened goose in the back duck. of that Camry. I guess like I, surely it was going similar. Like, like he had to well, kill it. Ricky or... Bobby drove with a mountain lion once. So well, that, oh, is yeah. the, that is the thing I was going to say is like, there's no way he had was to be driving chaotic. very far. Yeah. He had to be killing that thing as soon no, as he got probably pretty car. soothing. You think he like rock to sleep in the back of the car? Yeah, like in there, the vibrations in the I car. Think probably the goose probably just ring their neck, you know. That no is idea. true. I don't think That's it's crazy. a very slow process. I think you just must be. I think they have really weak necks. How many times has he done that? You think? Because I don't know that you. It was a well-oiled operation. It sounds like something a fraternity would make you do, doesn't it? He said from Milwaukee, that, so that's I'm some sure Kappa Phi Theta of... activity, right there. How much there. does like, a you need full to... goose cost? Let's go, let's go how much are we it. how much are we saving here yes let's see that are we saving 50 bucks no well <laughs> who knows maybe I, have, I, have I would no say idea. a good 38 oh a whole oh. goose now i just googled oh. this no i just googled way. this a whole goose is like 200 dollars. okay but next thing we need to know is do you uh, free range goose 170 Whole pre-cooked goose seven pound 345 dollars or geese a i know where i'm going after this I know where I'm going. Guys, okay, okay. I think it's got to be certain. Some, uh, it's got to be cer certain. Frozen geese though. for like seventy-five dollars. Yeah, like what kind of species are they? The same? I don't know. I don't know I'm assuming it's like I'm assuming it's like geese. fish, where like not every fish is the same. Yeah, but there's way more fish than there is geese. Uh, Nene's. Oh. I think that's a type of goose. Geese. I know those, those, those are aggressive. Those are very mm, territorial. A, you don't want those. They are too no. muscular. It's those, those. I, I almost had to kill one with a golf club one time because it started chasing after Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> almost had to do it. It would have been sad, but I would have done it if I had to. He would. He would have done it. He had to do what was necessary. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, take care of it. Uh, okay. Well, Jeez. let's get into the final episode of the Imposter series just dropped. So if you're still watching it, you haven't watched the finale yet. This is your sign to skip forward. Once it's just scroll on your timeline and see till you either see or hear us talking we about chapters on this ratings. Uh, we don't typically, but uh, I, maybe I could for this episode. But scroll forward to where you see someone throwing a disc, and now you found it. That's gonna be what comes up right after this. So, uh, episode five happens hmm. on the T of hole one. I reveal imposter is still there. Still among them, still one of the final four. Everyone kind of goes into fight or flight mode um, because it, you know, if the imposter survives that round, they still they then double their money. Everyone else goes home empty-handed. Um, I I immediately started interviewing. I think the first interview happened like on the first tee or on the first fairway. I interviewed each person once um, throughout it, and it seemed to me pretty quickly people started just trying to think back through and, and come up with a few different theories and pretty quickly, Trevor, the, the eyes started turning to you. What, yeah. what, why do you think that was early, early in the round before the round had went on and people started talking to each other? Well, I was always going to be the scapegoat and I was impressed that I had gone that long. Like we, I had always known with, the i'll say the outsiders the non-foundation people 
there was always going to be a little more unity there. And I was really impressed that I had made it thus far without attracting a lot of attention in the sense that I thought that they would just isolate me. And so I think when it came push to shove and now there's only four of us, I, you know, all of a sudden there was an elevated level of stress and, and like fear that that hadn't been there yet, because I think you get to this point, half the field is gone. You know, there's been quite a few people eliminated that everybody has thought was the imposter. And now you're just thinking, okay, odds are on our side, like that. We've got this guy out of here. Um, and I, and I really do believe that everybody was prepared to go in there and potentially throw away votes. I don't even know if anybody was going to be willing oh, to vote. Really? Um, I, I genuinely believe that that would have been the case had, had the imposter. Before, not let me, I guess let me there. back up a little bit before, cause Brody, That's you weren't there for this before we teed off, uh, Mikey, before the cameras roll or anything, walked up to me and he said, I'm very confident the imposter is gone. If on that first tee, you say the imposter is still here, I'm going to crap my pants. Yeah, people were pretty confident that they weren't there. And I think so, that was, yeah, that was kind of the general consensus was, I, interesting. we, we got I them think, out, they're gone. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think once they knew it was there, I was just kind of the safe landing space for people to kind of put where they had to put their chips. And I think once they got to that point, okay, we need to, we're just going to focus in on Trevor. Then it became dissecting, you know, my previous rounds, which I think anybody doing that at that point was reaching, but it was just a fear response because people were definitely freaking out. I mean, you could see the looks well, on everybody's faces. Well, I thought it was kind of fascinating is, you know, they had, you know, the mob, I would say, because obviously there's a lot of things we're going to change moving forward uh, with the show. Um, but there was a, like a group voting block throughout which, the show, which most of them were gone at this point though. Yeah. yeah. That was fascinating. There's only two and, left. And it was, it was very interesting how the, the previous week they had all decided, let's just vote people out still. Right to eliminate people. And then I don't think any, there was just nothing, no one, nothing that Josh did or Larkin did. Like Larkin was already on my like list from, from very early on, but then he kind of just faded away. It was just, it's fascinating to hear that you're telling me that they voted those people out and then they wouldn't have still had that same mentality of like, no, we still need to vote someone out with four well, just to give I us the best think, odds. I think a lot of it comes down to being that close to the money. And at this point, based on who was left, like it's one thing earlier in the episodes to get people kicked off. But at that point, when you're that close to the end, you really feel like you're stealing it from, from other people. So I think at that point, it becomes a lot harder to kick somebody out. And mm. I don't think anybody would have been able to justify the let's get rid of the the weak link because the weak link doesn't matter anymore. Now there's no more rounds. Well, that was never even a strategy anyways. Jo that was uh, what, that's uh, what a lot of the voting was justified as. Mm. Well, At least that's what they were saying to me. <laughs> well, clearly they were not voting out the weak link though. Larkin. If, if you... Yeah, but Larkin I, I, didn't go till round three. Right. Well, let me put it this way. It was mentioned. It was just to weird. That, vote that, the, that the weak said. link previously, and Man. I was voting Joel for that reason, along with other people. But the the problem was only a couple people were going along that line. Other people were pushing in different directions. Um. So yeah, it is kind of true that like though it kept getting mentioned, That's it never what I'm really saying, fell like, through. There wasn't actually, if you look at it, there wasn't really this. Hey, this is how you play the game. This is how we vote people out. Because I got voted out for the line, which yeah. doesn't make any well, sense at the all. The real reason, I mean, realistically, the real reason you got voted out is because I just nobody was going to let you get all the way to the end. I just kind of deciphered that pretty early, and they decided they didn't need you for Timbrook, basically. That, that, still doesn't, that still doesn't make any sense because if you keep me, if you keep me around and know that you can eventually eliminate me at the end, when you get, like, for wanna... example, for example, if, if I was still in the game right now. Yeah. But you also jump putted it out of bounds. <laughs> like <laughs> there was a reason. <laughs> yes. I made one mistake. Correct. A I big made one. I made one $500 mistake. $500 mistake. Um, <laughs> but the, what I'm, all I'm saying is like the going back and watching it, 
and just seeing how people voted and how people like changed. A lot of times it did just seem like people were just voting to try to stay in the game. Yeah. Oh, and, for sure. And, yeah, it, it was um, it's self-defense. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it was an interesting watch to kind of see definitely one of those things of where it's like we definitely can put certain police things in place next year to to kind of move the game in a certain direction but um yeah it was it was fascinating fascinating for sure uh now one thing i did want to bring up is later uh later in the round trevor you're seen talking to gary a few times throughout the round yeah how it's spliced crazy. is there's one this interview there's one you talking to gary moment where joel's not really mentioned at all and then it cuts to you telling joel gary's coming for your head <laughs> yeah uh this Walk is us through crazy your experience edit. in that. I am going to look like a sociopath on this edit, mostly because I, it was it must just not have been recorded. But Gary absolutely 100 percent came up to me and we talked about Joel and being worried about Joel or voting out Joel in some capacity. Now, did I over exaggerate whatever was said to Joel to then try to get him on my side? Absolutely, I did 100%. But there was the conversation that was shown between me and Gary was not the conversation that led me to then go talk to Joel. That is how it is edited. And therefore, it looks like I just straight up lied to the very next person <laughs> I talked to. And uh, yeah, that puts me in quite a spot in the edit. But that's not the case. I talked to Gary and and the way and Gary talks to everybody else as if that didn't happen. But the reason Gary did that was talking that way is because Gary was lying to me when he was talking about Joel. So everything that Gary meant, he was communicating to other people and he was basically just chucking a smoke screen at me. I was going to so, say, cause there's out yeah. of all the people left, the only person that you can eliminate as the imposter is Joel because of the first episode. Yeah. The first episode, what Joel did, eliminated him as being the imposter. Yeah. Well, at this point, also, though, I think almost Mike, everybody ended up doing something like that, other than maybe Mikey. No, 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 no. Joel put himself in a position at the very end. No one, no one had a position like Joel did. I did. What round? The final round. The very oh, I last. I haven't, I, haven't finished the, I haven't finished the episode. <laughs> yeah, the very last hole. <laughs> I, I haven't finished the episode, so I can't. I can't see that part. Oh, but so I'm just saying, leading up to that point, Joel literally, episode one. Yeah, he had a black and white situation for sure. But yeah, I also had one at the end, and that didn't really. I think at that point, place. the tough part for you was everyone. Had, everyone was setting their setting their ways. The only they person were, that wasn't like, funny enough was Joel. Joel was kind of, as you see in the voting, he was right. able to be swayed one way or the other. Well, it just, like I said, it comes down to fear. There was a ton of money on the line, and it I just became the easiest person to land a vote on. That that's what it comes down to. Like, and and then everything that happens after that is just them trying to build a case against me to reassure their vote so that they can like be confident in it. But I was I was the the target. Like I was yeah. going to be the guy who was going to catch the, a vote. There's the no interesting, way that, the vote, that Joel was going to catch votes. <laughs> The interesting part about this game is it is very similar in Survivor esque of where in Survivor if you don't get an alliance and you don't get a voting block then yeah. you're you're getting eliminated. Yeah, now the interesting way, thing yeah. about this was all of that was outside of the actual game. Yeah. The voting block and the talking and all that. I mean you hear it in the video of people saying like I woke up this morning I talked to this person. And that's where there is Barstool kind of ran into a little issue with this too. The first time they did survivor. Did you guys watch that? No. So when they did survivor, they ran into a little bit of an issue because people were texting because uh. they had their phones. So people were able to constantly have like conversations outside of the actual game to, and then also they allowed once people got eliminated because they were filming it in the, uh, in their office, they allowed people to like have a big, pretty influence on what should happen. So like when Dave got backstabbed, basically got voted out, he made sure in the next voting block that the person that backstabbed him got voted out. So uh, it'd be interesting to do this show where no one, like, I don't know if you do like no phones or something, but you do it in a way where all the communication is like somehow in the game 
Yeah. It'd be tough to do that, but um, that's where, like, to me, I, I didn't, it didn't really make sense until they started talking about, like, the voting block. I think it was, like, an episode three or something. And then I was like, oh, all those guys are just voting together because they basically made a pact. Yeah, and obviously they turned on a couple people at, at a certain point, but that that was interesting to find out. Now the so what for voting in the final round, we took the voting power away from the imposter. Throughout the entire series, the imposter had voting power because it was just one vote among you know many. But when it came down to the final, if the imposter has voting power, they can easily, easily, easily split a vote. So we didn't tell people that. Um, mm. so that there was still distress. We told the audience before you go to the vote, I let you know, like the imposter's vote, whoever that may be, will not count. So two people have to side on one person for it to, to go. So the first people to come up is you have Mikey and Gary. They both vote Trevor. That was by the end of the episode, no surprise. Trevor walks up, he votes Gary. By the end of the episode, no surprise there. The big question mark was Joel. Was because Joel really the only two people up where he was either going to vote Trevor and it was going to be three to one and Trevor was gone no matter what, or he was going to end up voting Gary. And he got up there and did what was a very big brain play, ended up not mattering. It was a very big brain play because he was thinking he knew Mikey voted Trevor. He assumed Gary voted Trevor. No, he then knew uh, Trevor voted Gary or assumed Trevor voted Gary. So he got up there. He was like, Look, I have to look back at, at how this whole thing's went. And he's like, Gary, if anything, like Gary's been awesome to me. Um, his only flaw is like, sometimes maybe he's just being too genuine. That could be the only thing. He's like, but if it's anything like yesterday, if I vote Gary and I split the vote, then Gary and Trevor both go home and it just leaves me and Mikey. And I know myself, I trust myself and I trust Mikey. He's like, so I can eliminate the two people that have suspicion on them. If I split this vote and vote Gary, he's like, so I have to vote Gary knowing I'm eliminating someone who's innocent. Which is crazy, yeah. Uh, Is he going to get all Mikey's money too? Yeah, he well, Mikey ended up in the end just giving it to the two who didn't make it. Um, But he was in that moment thinking, I'm splitting the vote. I'm sending both Trevor and Gary home because I know one of them's the imposter. And then me and Mikey are just going to split the rest of the pot. Which was when he did that and walked away, Connor and I looked at each other. I was like, that was genius. Too bad it doesn't matter, but that was genius. Uh, And so they walked down. (laughs) <laughs> dramatic moment, dramatic final, open the bag. And Trevor was not only voted out, but he also was the imposter, meaning that Mikey, Gary, Joel each got $1,400, which Mikey then distributed. And I can confirm he did give uh, 700 each to Josh and Larkin. Um, so I can confirm he actually Which will be against the rules next year. Yeah, yeah a lot of people definitely. were questioning his motives the whole time. Mate, now, the but, good news is... Well, yes, he so wanted to be on the show. That was his now, motive. The good news is the audience, <laughs> yeah, the audience doesn't believe him 100%, so it actually has made it quite interesting. But obviously, it made him immune to votes. Like, he was never yeah. going to get voted. Yeah. And that's why you can't um, do that in shows. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. no, uh, that's you know, definitely Brody, a, the, a future rule, for sure. The, the chance that I was referring to was on hole 18... In this format, obviously, it was just me. I had the 18. Yeah, I saw key. that. Yeah. And if we make bogey, I am pocketing $500. Or was it? Yeah, it was another yeah. 500. We were going to miss the line. And admittedly, First off, another great line. How did I don't yeah. know how we did it? But wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be, um, you're basically guaranteeing 500 if you miss versus the chance at getting 3,000 if you make it and don't Correct. get voted out? But but I already knew. I already knew at this point that I was catching everybody's votes. So my, I, I uh, did okay. start the hole in a way where I was like, if I may, if it's able to look like an, a bogey, that's understandable, I'm going to do it. But I ended up making par. I laid up under the basket to make par. And so I told them, I'm like, guys, if I were the imposter, I, and I already know you guys are suspecting me. Why on earth would I not collect another $500? And so that was my very big case to them, and they just did not care. <laughs> that wasn't a bad. That wasn't a bad play. Well, I mean, because anybody else in those in that position that doesn't care about the reveal, well, I think is taking the five hundred dollars. <laughs> I think if it was someone other than you, um, because yeah, I mean, there was obviously a disadvantage of, there was a little bit of a disadvantage, I think, late in the game for you, because I, I I agree with like if there yeah, was any yeah, suspicion yeah. with you. If someone else did that, then that definitely could maybe play and swing votes at the end, but. 
yeah, I think I think everyone had their mind made up when they kind of looked about who was left. Um, but yeah, it was like a perfect storm, really, with you being the imposter there, because I feel like had you not been the imposter, your role in like the team aspect, obviously things would change, but your overall role in the team would have been the same. Like we would have looked at you at hole selection, what players should go on certain holes, how to play yeah. the holes. And so you did kind of have that big role, which probably actually was probably challenging for you from the get go being the imposter. Cause you couldn't just sit back and really not say anything. Right. Yeah. But it also well, kind think, of kept the the heat off of you for a while yeah, too. I, was, I think that it helped did, yeah. because every big, like almost every big decision Trevor was involved in, in some way, shape or form. Um, because people were just turning to you. So then it like built trust. Yeah. And, early uh, game, early game. It was very good to be me late game. It, like yeah. I said, I became the landing spot. And then, the yeah. We the almost day, need a play where like no one's played the course before. Yeah. Well, of where it's just day, on we, uh, <laughs> now I can say this, uh, send us but, to Canada or, um, yeah. <laughs> where, where they, where do they send people for Bonobo or something for a survivor? I don't know. Not, yeah. <laughs> uh, we did, rig the imposter like who got the imposter that there, there well, wasn't I did really not know to be yeah, clear no one knew <laughs> like i said trevor was in the dark about the entire show yeah, that I was, was still a surprise to everybody all else trevor knew they're about to play imposter but that's oh. all he knew there um, is one crazy thing oh, so you set it up for trevor being the imposter i had to they did yeah here's my logic why because i knew i i was worried brody was going to get voted off which ended up happening mainly because i didn't know how everyone was going to interact in like a, a tense situation brody you know starts ordering stuff around yelling i was like that could just lead to him getting voted off so couldn't i didn't want to give it to brody josh and mikey i'd played like role games with before and they're just sometimes where like they'll take a stance of i'm just going to tell you who i am and you can believe me or not and i was like that would ruin it i can't do that <laughs> so then the other four people i didn't wild. know well the enough, <laughs> i guess i i would i did at the end of the day i could have very easily trusted larkin or gary or like with the imposter role but going into the show i didn't know him and so we went back and forth i'm like do we just let it be random and i was like but the whole show hinges on the imposter and so i was like it's a risk because they might assume i'm rigging it i was like but if we make it look very random then they won't know it's rigged and that would be the perfect thing. And so my we decided dreams. Trevor because I was like, he's the one that like, he's done this before. He's going to be comfortable on camera. He's going to know the courses. I was confident in that. And I was pretty comfortable. He was going to make it at least around like three or four. Cause right. if, if he my... got voted out in round one, it would have been fine. The show could have still went on, but it would have, it wouldn't have worked out the same way for sure. In, I don't in know. I think it would have been a little bit more fascinating been... if the imposter would have got voted out early. Well, that's the other thing we kept talking about is like, because then you're you're literally eating people and and you don't know for the fact <laughs> yeah. that you, the imposters are. That would out. have been a very funny dynamic to. We witness. had talked about it when we were doing the whole show planning. That was one of the like things we kept coming back to. Is like, well, what happens? Because we can't once we set the show in motion, we can't control yeah. who people vote in or that. So what happens if the imposters vote after round one? And I just kept coming back to we have a bunch of players with a wide variety of skill set. I don't think it's going to matter if the imposter's gone. Like someone's going to look suspicious at some point because they're playing for money. And once someone starts looking suspicious, then like the audience isn't going to know the imposter's gone. The people right. aren't going to know the imposter's gone. It still would have been fascinating. So we yeah. weren't too stressed about it, but I did want, I wanted as good a chance as possible for the imposter not to just be like obviously out round one. In my wildest dreams, it would have been Gary because imagine the show could have literally played out the exact same way if Gary were the imposter and just imagine the look on everybody's faces, if he would have, if he would have been the imposter the whole time, <laughs> like yeah. we did have. So this is one moment that was in the show that I didn't realize happened and had it been directed towards me, this was kind of an oversight that we didn't think about. So at one point, Gary and Joel are talking and one of the two asked the other, what was written on the bottom of their disc that they flipped up at the beginning of the show when we learned our roles. 
I would not have known what was written on the discs that didn't say imposter. Gary or whoever was asked knew. He said it said player or whatever. So if somebody would have asked that at the very beginning on the first episode, <laughs> I would have been lost and the whole thing would have been over. It would have been like that Spyfall game. Where <laughs> yeah. you're like, I don't no, know if I would have been able to answer that. Yeah. I don't I don't remember. I think you like could have you could have like played right it after off. the fact. Yeah, right played. after would have been tough. Right. But That's a couple I mean. days, I would be. I I have terrible <laughs> memory. You could you could have played it off of like, what do you mean? What was written on the bottom? You don't know what was written on the bottom of yours, and then they'd have been like, well, I know what's on the bottom of mine. What's on the bottom of yours? Like, That's true. I would have well, had to why? go that route. Yeah, that, I think if you went that route, then you could have almost <laughs> made a strong a strong case of been like. Guys, no one tell Joel was on the bottom of the disc. He doesn't know. No, I would have like I would have froze up like a block of ice. There's yeah, no way. I think I I only thought of that because when you said it, I was like, dang, what would have happened in that moment? And then after I, banking for a few minutes, like, oh, you could have spun it on him, but in the moment you would have just been like, hey, uh, it, uh, it was blank. Uh, There's nothing on it. I wasn't yeah, the imposter. I probably like, would have oh, said really? that. Really? It was blank <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> would have been ugly. Yeah. But no, I think, you know, I think our goal here is next week, we're going to try our best to get as many people who are on the show to call in while we record um, so that we can go over the entire show, give you more behind the scenes, all of that fun stuff um, and get, you know, more thoughts on like what people were thinking at different moments. And um, I think that'll be a really good time. So we won't talk through the imposter show as a whole, but overall, I think it was a really good success. And I also now feel way more confident in if we bring it back in the same way, if it is imposter again next year, like I, now I know how the show works a lot more. We've watched it play out. We can actually let a lot, like let the imposter be more random. Um, Cause the other thing that uh, with that, that I thought was funny that I would never even thought of was early in episode one, I think y'all both were onto it, of like, I so I had to ask Joel what the bottom of his disc said. And since everyone yeah. thought it was random, that meant to them that I hadn't seen the word imposter yet. Right. But it, what it really was, was we wanted, a, we didn't know if we were going to use a shot of people showing the bottom of their disc and yeah. it's saying what they were. We didn't know if we were ever going to use that shot, so we wanted to get it for everyone. So I had no, everyone I used, show the I used that Connor. as a real early convincing yeah. point. Yeah. I had everyone use it for Connor, not for me. I knew who I knew who everyone was when they walked over the hill. I basically told Brad, I said, send me Trevor third. I don't care how you send everyone else. And so Brad yeah. just called out whoever, and we just that's why the discs were set up, yada yada yada. So great time. What would you have done if I gra- didn't grab the top disc? <laughs> I would have been like, okay, we got to reshuffle. And I would have made sure that in my head, there, I, Trevor had to be the imposter. That's all I cared about. I and can't hey, wait for next out. week. Cause I I'm very interested in asking some questions. To yeah, some no, people. that's going to be great. <laughs> that's going to be great. Now that we've like seen it all. Now that people know when certain moments happen, that person wasn't the imposter. I think it'd be a great time to just like re relive it all. So that'll be going on next week. And Hey, if you love this show, let me tell you about something else you would love. That's our Heiser Club mailbag. You can head over to patreon.com slash foundation disc golf. And in addition to a weekly bonus podcast called The Mailbag, you also get an exclusive uh, piece of content every month that you vote on. We also have contests that go on. The warehouse does a bunch of unboxing videos and stuff like that on there. It's just a really good time. If you're on the right tiers, you can even earn discounts at foundationdisc.com. You get exclusive access to Discord, our Discord server. Um, but the mailbag is a weekly Q and A show that really is very little about disc golf. But when it is about disc golf, it's just about good times, and we tell a lot of stories and stuff like that. So if you enjoy the off season, I can promise you, you would enjoy the mailbag. That happens every single Friday, exclusively on our Patreon. So become a part of the Heiser Club by going over to Patreon.com/slash Foundation Disc Golf and join today. You can even get a free trial to make sure you like it before you commit. But all right, it is time for the game. Time to play the game. Um, it's about to get frisky today with the no divisions. Yeah. So what we're doing here. You're gonna see some bad guesses. You're gonna see the picture and you're gonna text me the rating. That's how the game works. Yeah, I saw Just a comment simple. saying like the, the once we know the rating, it kind of is lame because you have this scale of like what the division. Yeah. yeah. But I honestly don't know. I think we I were, think this is gonna we, work great. We were so dialed in though. Y'all I know, but I'm I I if you told me what where this could help you. This could help you. 70 rated players should play. I don't know. This could help you. All right. Silas, let's go ahead and get that first picture up whenever you're ready. Here we go. This is oh. Joshua Patton. He's oh. based out of Louisiana. He has been a member since 2012. He's played 175 oh. career events Come on. and has 59 career wins. 
Kind of looks like Paul oh, a my bit from the background. Gosh. What is his rating? All right, I'm sending mine in. All right, we got Trevor's. Trevor's in here. This I is can interesting just, too I, because... I can just say mine since Trevor's already locked in. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Maybe and... that's what we should do. Someone locks in, the other person talks it out, and then say it. So that way you okay. actually talk about it. So okay. you lock in first. I'll lock, I lock in the it next in. one. All right. So a couple things stand out to me. First off, dude looks like he's in some attire that would make him a decent disc golfer. That looks like some sort of sponsored shirt on the back. Also, he is. I will, I will just. Actually, never mind. He's playing hole seven at uh, Winthrop here. Um, he's going. It looks like. Uh, uh, looks like. Um, a fairway driver forehand, which that is a high level play for that hole. If you're not good, you're not throwing a fairway driver forehand on that hole, especially it looks like he's going on the hyzer route, which is like the Andrew Marweed play where you just try to hyzer <laughs> it in to give yourself like a 20 footer. So I'm going pretty high on this guy. I I'm going to go like a 985. 985 mm. for Brody. All right. He definitely um, looks like a pro. One thing to think with now without the uh, rating or without the division is you no one's going to be dividing their score by half. So there's going to be big Ooh. time big time swings big going on big here. Swings. Um I'll tell you one of you got within 4. One of you got okay, within well, 4. That makes me feel good cuz I'm my guess isn't that far away from you. Uh a few things that I noticed. Number 1 Brody, uh, that shirt is sold on, uh, was sold on West Side's website at some point in history. Uh, mm. Two, I didn't know if y'all would catch this. There's no one standing by hole seven. Why well, didn't think he was playing? Which made me wonder. Not, he's not playing a tournament. I don't know. Could have been. No. Been. No. Never know. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, but regardless, I think he might have actually been playing USDGC because Joshua Patton is 1,013 rated. Oh. And Trevor guessed 1,009 Giving Trevor four points, Brody twenty-eight points. Did he qualify in? Let me look. I haven't. I didn't actually. This uh, might be like a. This might be like a qualifier. Uh, it could be a qualifier. Let me. I just saw it and I was like, this could throw people off because you never know. It's probably, mo it's probably Monday qualifying. Never know what you're looking that's at. That's what here. I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you don't. There's not a lot of people that play that course. And he the just looks like a pro. I will say that's an well, older T pad. So if he did play, it would be a few no, years ago. Is it the yeah, mulch now is it's down. built up? How do you know that's whole, not built up? I think it might be built up. Does no, it look like he's a little bit higher year, than the floor? I don't think so. It looks that, like the is older. that the tee pad the year that that we were there? I, uh, like I the think this is. I think this is the stage? normal tee pad. Is it not? No. Now it's a whole stage. So stage? I know. I it's, it's 20, 2018 USDGC. He came in 80th. That's wow. what this photo is from. I would assume. Oh. 2018 okay. USDGC, right. he played it. I'm just saying, if you look at it, it does look like it I can could see what you're be saying, the very like a, edge a, of... A thick piece of grass in front of him. Yeah, that, it looks like it could be the very but edge But it looks to me like he's on ground level, because nowadays it's on a big old stage, Zuka tent behind. Yeah, so. I get. I know. The way you take photos, though, you can never trust them yeah, AI nowadays. That's true. You can trust true. All right, Sai, so let's get this next one up. All right, I'm going first on this one. You're going to text first. Yep, this is Matthew... Oh man. Jalrich. Locked He's in. From Langley Township, British Columbia, that Canada. Was... Oh no. Um you didn't Brody's know already that, locked did in. You? Brody's no, already locked in. It makes it makes <laughs> even better though. His number is gonna be uh, like one even more. 14 career events, zero career wins. Brody's locked in. Trevor, what do you think Matthew's rating is? I mean, yeah, he's definitely newer to the game. No specific disc golf foot attire form like there might be some things going right but not a lot yet and canadian which means that rating is gonna be even lower than normal i'm gonna go ahead and say you say he's played 14 events 14 i'm gonna events. say he is eight 12 eight 12 for trevor okay one of y'all is yet again very close very close this time within six points well, this is always uh, on point. And that is Mr. Brody Smith. He is 846 rated. Brody wow. guessed 840. Um, he actually just went up 12 points as of ah, like a month ago. So that, 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 was, that was huge. Um, the thing so, that jumps out, the white socks, black shoes. Yeah. Um, if you're wearing that fit, two things can be true. 
you either one of the best in the world or you're absolute dar- garbage. And you've never played team sports. No, you can play D- team sports for sure. Keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, it's just like you can't, you can't with that, with white socks, dark shoes, you can't be like a 950 rated player. You either 10, 20, or you're low 800s. You're not. Respect. respect. It is just what it is. All right. Yeah, Trevor's now at 38 points. Back. Brody's at 34. Neck and neck here. Uh, Let's go. Next picture. This is Sebastian Ooh. Falconer out of Christchurch, oh. New Zealand. Oh, uh, my gosh. Member New, Zealand. New Zealand. Member since 2020. He has played 52 career events and has 15 career wins. This is our first Kiwi. Trevor is texting Trevor's texting first here to lock yeah, in. Yeah. Size, you ever had a Kiwi before? Yeah. Texas locked Why? in. All right, Trevor right, has locked like in. You know, wouldn't be a Kiwi guy. I didn't have Kiwi for a long time for some reason. One of my favorite words to say as a kid. Um, all right. What do you think, Brody? Well, there's a lot of people watching. I don't sure think is. that would be normal at like an MA3 event. Well, they're in New Zealand. That that makes my that point even more. I think there's Maybe less likelihood less. that. Think no, about no, the no, European no, no. crowds. No, no. This guy's MPO. This guy's MPO. Now, the question is, New Zealand over there, what does MPO really mean? Exactly. 978. 978 for Brody. Mm. All right. And Trevor is mm-hmm. locked in. You might Y'all right just split the difference. Very impressive. So Trevor went We're so good at this. nine on one side. Brody went 10 on the other side. He's actually 968. Ah! Oh, we're right on it. So Trevor gains one point on Brody, but that makes what a three point difference now three heading into the difference. final round. Wow. This wow. Huge. This is this is tight. Gosh, this I thought crazy. it wouldn't be so accurate. I mean, my last guess is pretty shaky, but y'all both had one off, but then dialed. outside of that, you're dialed. Oh, right, here you go. Man. Gosh, enhance. Enhance. Here we have <laughs> Eric <laughs> Eric Gilliatt out of Jamestown, Wait, there's California. Clues. There's clues. Uh, his member this since clues. 2022. Am I locking this in? 24 yeah. career events, one career win. This is Brody's first. Brody guess first. Oh, gosh. gosh. Dang it. <laughs> Where is he from? California. Ooh. I didn't know they had that many trees out there. They did. We went. We played some wooded know, courses I've out there. In California. No. Is it, <laughs> isn't your favorite course like literally all woods? Out My there? favorite course? And yeah, I was on a point. like golf course. But it definitely no, no, had no, some your, woods. No, your favorite course in your favorite course. Day Law. Yeah. Oh, oh. Very, yeah, very, technically it's all wooded. All very wooded. wooded. <laughs> I'll talk about the actual one that I loved out there, which was our final Dirty course. No, yeah, we all know you love that. You remember the name of that course, Hunter? I don't. <laughs> it's, I just know I went to the wrong something creek because I went to the wrong golf course first. Oh, uh, Wolf Creek? No, that's his golf course. <laughs> Did you Wolf lock Creek in yet? is uh, yeah, Wolf, Brody's Wolf, locked in. Brody's locked in. Wolf Trevor's Creek's a, the course on Golden Tee. Oh, nice. Uh, Brody has okay, so here, in. few things to note here. Difficult to decipher. He's slinging that sidearm very low to the ground, but I also Jake do that. Wolf esque. Yeah. Uh, I think the disc golf footwear checks out. And also I've noticed a bag in the bottom left corner that looks to be pretty premium. So he's definitely invested in the game. Not a lot of events or wins yet. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to say he's a decent am player. This is, this is the one that can really get wild. I'm going to say. 892. Oh, wow. We're way off here. We're right. way off y'all are, here. Y'all are very, y'all are very spaced out here. This is our biggest one. <laughs> one of you, but neither of you are that close. One of you though is within twenty-five, and one of you is seventy-three away. So oh, no, there, no there is a clear it. winner here. Never got it. Not even he's, close. He's like super low, eight hundred rated. He's got to be. And for the first time, Brody Smith has won this season. We oh, have he's, a he's good. He's good. Sixty-five rated Eric Gilliatt. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. He's that high rated. Just playing, sort of playing. Yeah. There you go. Brody takes wow. it down. Feels good. Uh, Feels talking. good. To get that one. See, that's the belt. beauty of the no divisions guessing because that you was just, electric. Like, that was electric. You get split like that. Yeah, the y'all, no y'all divisions close all the way through there too. Can get crazy. Yeah. That was nah, wild. That was great. That's great. All right, let me get back to my notes here. We have a few short oh, topics. Can I, 
Can yeah. I, if, if we have the technology, someone send a video. Oh, okay. We have the technology. Someone, yeah. someone just send a, a thro them throwing. I would love oh. to. I would love to see just a. Video. That could be a. That could be a new layer. A little form video. That could yeah, be just give me. Sure. Give me a little throw. Just give me a little. That throw. could be even harder potentially. I know. <laughs> there's some you watch janky a guy just throws out there like, that they can score though. Some guy could throw a 500 foot well, forehand saying, <laughs> putt. I've also seen a lot of MA3 players that win distance contests at local tournaments. Yeah. It's yep, just like yep. yeah, but he can't putt to save his life. Show us um, your best looking throw. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, first off, I got to start with this one. This isn't really a topic. It's just fascinating. So this is from Joshua Patton. Actually, we might have just, that might be we the first guy did. I did the rating on. Yeah. Yeah. He said, uh, I guess y'all haven't heard of the legend that is Chris Alto. When Scott Stokely started getting back into disc golf, he created an alter ego and started playing tournaments with a made up name and a new PDGA number. His hair was blue and he wore a mask while he played too. He played multiple tournaments like this until eventually someone figured it out and the PDGA contacted him and told him he couldn't use a different PDGA number. You can still search Chris Alto on Facebook and see all the crazy pictures he posted. You're welcome. What? This, this isn't real. Hey, Stokely had blue hair before he had an alter ego or I, after I, maybe. I think it was I've after. Seen, it was after he got back into disc golf. with blue hair. Yeah. But isn't, this is like against the rules. You get suspended. I don't know. It, that's, we need to, I searched Chris Alto on Facebook, and there is they just were posting pictures in in like a like not like a COVID mask, like a mariachi mask, like a like a Mexican wrestling mask. And mask. they were playing in that. And apparently, I don't know if that's the and mask they, they were I playing mean, in. Scott Stokely. But, yeah. Chris also, Scott Alto? Stokely is like six foot seven. That it's was what I was like, thinking. I is I feel gonna... like blend in i feel like i would recognize maybe maybe he'd been out of the sport for a while so maybe he just didn't but that's probably how he got recognized but like also he's, if he no threw a forehand way. yeah like if, if that if would, someone built like that through the forehand it looked like that i'd be like that's scott stokely i don't other fun game that we could play on this show wait he's still I posting i don't know how i don't know how we do this but you like um you you make it to where the player's like a black silhouette or something oh and you try to guess and you try to guess, like you watch them throw, but you can't tell who it is, because like yeah. he has one of the most recognizable forehands. I I think you could even go a step farther. I think there's a lot of players you could I could freeze it mid throw, black them out, and oh. you just tell me who they are mid throw. Oh, that would be so easy. I can do that. Next, I can do that even. Well, next week we won't do it, but I can do that for sure. That'd be a blast. Okay. All right, yeah. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. We got all kinds uh, of guessing games. All right. Next up, we have Tyler E. He said, You have a fully blank canvas. Time out. So the PDJ has told him not to do that? That's a, that's all that was said here. The hate he got I can't was enough punishment, Brody. Haven't you heard how the PDJ deals what with What are we doing? Well, actually, let me, let me go to the PDJ the and see hate? if I can find him. What are we doing? Uh, let me see if I can find him. That's blatantly against monster. the rules, though. Re regardless of whether it's Scott Stokely or not, like, what are what we rules? doing? I can't find, find him on. I can't find Chris Alto on, on the PDGA. They have 120 pages. That's why, I don't think it's, that's why I don't think it's a real story. PDGA doesn't even know his rules. Yeah, Chris Alto, I can't find. But if you search Chris Alto, his Facebook page Facebook. says, "I'm the I'm the best disc golfer in the world." Blah blah blah. Like, <laughs> it's not so, real. This is not real. This is not real. I'm not believing. I don't know. I don't know. There's only one I person that it. would know. You're that's a Scott Scott. Scott. I, I believe it. Him. Yeah uh tyler e he said you have a fully blank canvas money and space slash land is no object and you're looking to grow disc golf in your area by playing in a brand new course what type of course are you designing to maximize people getting into the sport championship pitch style park style beginner pitch and putt etc yeah pitch par, par three pitch well, and I, I only know, i know the answer to this nine, question nine the most played course in our area is timbrook yeah, yeah. Far. nine and hole, followed par by three pitch and putt I think yep. if it's if money and yeah. space nine is holes no, I like too because if it gets money people and space off the is course. no object, I think what I would do is go nine hole with the like like two tees. So go short tee that's like true pitch and putt, and then not long tee is in championship level, but long tees it's like Sandusky oh. level. Well, if we're going, if we're going to where like there's no limit on money or well, that's I'm putting in a water slide, I, I, I would, I would build a complex, build yourself a clubhouse, have your Indian's little pitch landing. and putt. Have a champions cup. Uh, have a go. champions course. I would build yeah. a full complex. Okay. Yeah, you said money in space slash land is no object. Yeah, yeah. have like a <laughs> nice putting green. You guys, when uh, I'm trying to think driving, what turn uh, like driving range. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think what tournaments you guys have gone to. The one that jumps out at me is like back in the day at the Las Vegas Challenge. They would bust out like 
30 baskets at the mm. driving range and it was awesome um worlds this year only had like three so that wasn't but like sometimes you show up to these like practice facilities and they're awesome so like i would also do that like have a sweet driving range with like seven eight baskets out there have a nice like little putting area with a bunch of different baskets elevated yeah mix it up i like that you, oh, you would lose a lot of money yes definitely instantly. But that's not, that's no object. Money, yeah, space, no object. land, no object. Yeah. Right. Passion project. All right. All right. All right. Wade Nichols said, if you had to pick only one style of play for an entire year, what would it be? Example, regular, best slash worst shot, horse, match play, single slash doubles, bingo, bingo, bongo, ripped revenge, etc. Regular. Yeah, I feel like it had to be stroke play. I would say maybe maybe to make it where like you would even consider, but no, maybe, maybe let's go let's go. You can't do regular. Does he put regular in there? I think that makes it too like. Why would you play something okay. other than just normal match disc play? A match play. How do I win the hole if I'm playing it with myself there? And like, a, is it just like me versus the par? And then if I get under par, I'm one Dude, up. What is this question? <laughs> no, no. Stop the play entire year. You I'll just make it real simple. Wise. Not like, red revenge. Like, I'm going to give you another chance. Come back next week with another question. We're giving you another chance. I think think if you take regular out is the only thing that makes this question interesting. But I don't know. I just want to see if someone someone dark horse is like, oh, I want to play best shot only. With with yourself? (laughs) No. No, I I wasn't choosing that. I was choosing regular. I just thought it could be – I thought it could be dark horse. I thought Brody might be like, oh, I'd love to play bingo, bingo, bongo. Is the question you and your friend play disc no, golf? It just, every- said, it just said you had to pick one style of play for an entire year. What would it be? Forehand roller only. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, yeah, obviously that'd be the best. That would, that would kind of suck. Uh, all right. Well, that's the topics. Let's get into the final story and wrap the show up here. We have this from Max Zambrano. I'm going to tell you, it's not really a story. It's more of a review. Um, and I just wanted to read it. He said, a trip from Indiana. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to come to Virginia. I had a few days before our family vacation, so me and my buddy Zach decided to drive from Indiana to Virginia and back in a two-day span. While we were there, we were able to stop by Kinship Coffee, put in parentheses, delicious, visit the Foundation Store, meet you guys, and play four courses, New London, Peaksview on Monday, Independence, and Timbrook on Tuesday. Here are a few takeaways from an Indiana guy. We should get more of these reviews of our courses from other people, by the way. Number one, those courses are absolutely beautiful this time of year. It was so cool to play them in the fall. Number two, mm-hmm. New London is the perfect wooded course. I've never had so much fun shooting 10 over par in my life. I felt like I was playing fairly decent too. It also gave me a lot of perspective on how good the pros are and how difficult the break 68 challenge is. Well, number three, I aced hole three at Peaks U on my first try and only try. Sorry, <laughs> Connor. You're awesome. That's tough. Number four, the camera doesn't do justice to the amount of elevation that are on the courses that you all play out there or how tight some of those gaps are. Number five, on that note, I brought my cart because I wanted to pl- I wanted to buy some discs and wanted a lot of discs to throw and assumed I may lose a few while I was there. As we were playing, I realized carts are for flat Indiana courses, not Virginia courses, especially not four in two days. Disagree. Yeah, independence with a cart is pretty tough. Uh, independence um, is tough. That, yeah, don't play a cart with independence. Yeah. But the rest, the rest, the rest are fine. Yeah, because you can do it. Peaks New you, Peaks you gets a little Peaks you gets a little bumpy in the woods. He's but gonna want to drag it, drag it through a little bit. Yeah. All in all, it was a fantastic trip. Love being able to play New London before the construction began. I appreciate you all taking time out of your day to say hey and take a picture with us and love being able to play the courses we see so much. Thank you all. Appreciate what you do for the sport. Love it. There you have That's it. Right. We need to get some more user reviews of our courses because I love getting people's feedback that don't live in our area so it was that was one of my favorite things in college was we played like camp hideaway all the time oh. being at liberty and we were sick of it to me it was just, i thought it was just, like i thought it tra- I was just a trash course i did Towards not like it and then people would come in town for the flamethrower the like normal collegiate tournament and just talk about how like i wish we had a wooded course like this near us this is this is incredible it's one of the best wooded courses i ever played i'm like what are you guys on like have you never seen Trees a wooded course polarizing it out there you know but you know what? Now that I'm removed from playing it like twice a week, it's a pretty solid course. You got to play the right tees. Fun. But yeah, so I think it's a good time. Where would, you, to town. where would you guys, uh, on a scale of zero to 10, where would you put the courses that you've played in Lynchburg versus the courses you played in Dallas? Ooh. What do you mean? So well, that's, 10, see, that's 10, another... 10 to Dallas. So, one, no, no. Like, 10, 10 like, is 
This is the best location. It has the best courses I've ever played. Zero well, Dallas like, has so much sucks. more, and we've barely scratched the surface. I know, but the ones that you did play and because like Dal- yeah, to me, Dallas, just from what we've played and what I've seen, it's probably an in the skate in the scheme of disc golf, it's probably a nine. Mm-hmm. And I would say Lynchburg is probably a seven and a half, maybe an eight, because we do have quite a few courses. I don't know. Though. What ones. does Dallas have that compares with New London? I don't know because we haven't played. That's, we probably played five percent of the courses. But that's the big. I think that's the big difference. Is it's just different terrain? Um, no, but Lynchburg has more challenging courses. There's not that many challenging courses. Like Trinity might be the most challenging course in the Dallas we played area. That Texas State's course. Well, that's not Dallas, I guess. Yeah, that's I was, outside. I was gonna go like Lynchburg eight, Dallas seven, mainly because. A New London, I think that's a There's huge. There's just so huge many plus. courses in Dallas. But the, in Dallas, though, they're far apart. So, like, how do you count? That's like us counting well, yeah, the courses I mean, in I guess, Lynchburg, Bedford, and Roanoke. That's like, true. And then if you do that, that's now true. we're if talking about If you give us an hour radius, there's not many. Because then you bring in Charlottesville. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because some, some of these courses do take me a decent. Like I'm playing this tournament in a couple weeks. Uh, it's up in Munson. Beautiful. We'll we'll go there next time. We'll go Munson Pecan. It's a okay. little bit of a drive, but I've those heard of Pecan, course, I think. Pecan, Pecan Grove. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, you guys will love it because there's a couple courses, there's a couple holes where it's like um, I don't know why the hills are that way, but they're like a uh the hills where they go up on both sides and it's like a flat top, but it's mm. like really narrow. Did you do a video got, there with someone? Uh, I might have filmed something out there a while ago. I can't remember okay, if I've actually yeah. ever filmed anything out there. Sounds or not. really familiar. Maybe you just described it to us before. Yeah, I think it's, you, I think you described it to us. It's before. a it's we a really fun. We'll we'll it. film some stuff out there for sure because it's a really fun one. But uh, those two courses are like really solid. But it's like it's like an all a full day trip. Yeah, and you're not gonna you're not gonna drive up there just to play one round and leave because that that'd be crazy. So you do have to like kind of play multiple rounds to make it worth the drive. But yeah, yeah, th- that's the one thing that's kind of, I think, lacking in the Dallas central area is there's not like a real challenging, tough course. That's like, again, I hate using the word long because it's not really long, but we have a lot of par three courses. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That's going to wrap up this week's show. Again, hopefully next week we'll have a full reunion episode. If you haven't watched the Imposter Series, be sure to do that before next week's episode so you can be in the know on everything we talk about. But regardless, we'll talk to you again next week. We'll see you then.